this is rough for anybody, uh, for our Cardinal family, uh, the whole baseball world. I mean, people in general, we all, we're all normal people. So to lose somebody like the way we did uh, crushes you. I have a chance to meet his wife and kids. That's one. Talk to his teammates. That's two. Talk to guys around baseball to know him. That's three. And then check his record. Never going on a disabled list. Taking the ball every fifth day. You know, star pitcher. It's a complete package, man. The word fraternity has been brought up a lot to us and through the media in the last couple of days, and it's something very special. And me personally, and I know my team would like to just thank everybody that's in it and for understanding what we're going through and understanding what the family's going to, going through, and uh, that's it. That's all I got to say. Find out tonight if baseball is any sort of grief therapy. Kyle's teammates deciding to go ahead with tonight's game against the Cubs. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN, 8 o'clock right after baseball tonight. The shock waves of Daryl Kyle's death continue to resonate through the baseball fraternity. You just keep asking yourself, why him? Tossed and turned all night, you know, just couldn't believe that something like this happened. The game's going on, and you really, your thoughts and prayers are thinking about him and his family and uh, yeah it's just a tough day. Sunday would be the first of many painful days as the Cardinals and Cubs take the field at Wrigley. Daryl never wanted to miss a start and he never missed a start so I think today he would he wouldn't have want us to, to miss the game so I think we all came together and we said we you know let's do what Daryl would want us to do. We feel like today was his day to start so we, we were wanted to go out and play for him on that that occasion. You go through the, the morning period and, uh, and it's, it's never going to end and uh, they'll always remember Daryl Kyle. Baseball Tonight is presented by Pep Boys. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Baseball Tonight. Chris Berman, Harold Reynolds, Buck Showalter on a, uh, on a night and a weekend that baseball and the fun and games has put in a little bit of perspective, gentlemen, I would say. Definitely is. I Things like this put in perspective. We will uh, talk about uh, the man in just a moment because words cannot properly describe the scene in Chicago this evening as words proved totally inadequate to describe the discovery yesterday that St. Louis Cardinals pitcher Daryl Kyle never woke up from his sleep on Friday night. 33-year-old Kyle, um, a pro's pro, died of natural causes in a Chicago hotel room, hence causing waves of grief throughout the Cardinals family for the second time this week, causing waves of grief throughout every level of baseball and understandably causing the bold spoman of yesterday's game between the Cards and the Chicago Cubs. Today came the coroner's report, whose initial findings of an autopsy showed Kyle had an 80 to 90 percent narrowing of two of the three branches of the coronary artery, which was, quote, the likely cause of death. Kyle's father died shortly after a heart attack in his mid-40s back in 1993. The complete results of the autopsy could take four to six weeks, but back to now. Somehow, some way, at Wrigley Field, the Cardinals will attempt to play ball without their teammate and dear friend. They voted at a team meeting last night unanimously to play tonight in a game Kyle was expected to start, partly because Kyle himself rarely missed one. It is our Sunday night game here on ESPN in a little less than an hour. Here's John Miller with Cardinals manager Tony La Russa. Tony, uh, what was the process that you and your team went through to decide whether or not the Cardinals wanted to play this game tonight? Well, um, you know, we had, yeah, I think the, you know, we really appreciate uh, the commissioner, the, uh, the Cubs understanding and canceling yesterday's game. That was an impossibility. So we had all night. Uh, we spent a lot of time together. We did a lot of talking. We expressed our concern for Flynn and the kids. Uh, so we had a very long session last night. And then, you know, we just started discussing it. And I'll tell you what, the, probably the, the sentiment that carried the day, uh, Darrell had an unbelievable record, especially in today's baseball, where, you know, he's been a multi-year player with a lot of money for years of never going in the DL, taking the ball every fifth day, took tremendous pride. And the, uh, the coincidence, the significance that this is his day. So we're going to say to Daryl Kyle, we're not going to play on the day that you would never miss. So, um, you know, we said, you know, we'll get through it. So, in a way, a, a tribute by playing this game to Daryl Kyle. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we just, uh, I was just telling the fellas, you know, among the coaches, you know, we always called Daryl John Wayne. 
you know, and uh, well, that's it's totally in keeping with with Darrell that, that we play tonight. And uh, I mean, I don't, I can't conceive of something being more difficult. All the years I've been around, that's the most difficult thing a team's had to go through. But you got to go through it, and uh, you know, we're tough enough. Did you have a meeting with the players before this game? Will you have a meeting with them? I just, I had a few short things to say, you know, nothing. You know, the, the, most of the conversation we had last night, we got to get, we got together again this morning. Uh, so you know, we've we've been together a lot since uh, since yesterday and discussed it to this, this afternoon. With just a couple of comments. And uh, finally, uh, the Cardinals as a ball club. From here on, um, a lot of this season still to go. Uh, what about overcoming this thing for the long haul? You know, John, there's some things that uh, you know. You, doesn't make sense to try to handle, you know, right now the most difficult thing is just trying to get through this. Hopefully we play the bottom of the ninth today, you know. Uh, so we're going to try and play this game today. We've got an off day tomorrow. We still have a lot to do with Darryl. I mean, we, Flynn was there this, this morning, and what's really even more staggering is to think about what's left for her without Darryl with her three children. I mean, she's got so much on her plate. So first priority is just take care of this game. Uh, doing what we have to do to help Flynn and the family, and then figure out uh, you know how we finish up the first half. Many thanks for coming out and chatting with us. Okay, John. Tony LaRusso, let's go back to the studio. I think Daryl Kyle was beloved, obviously, by his wife Flynn and her three young children, and all of us. Uh, our hearts are out to them, and that's that just sounds so pale to say it. I think the one thing that we all knew about Daryl Kyle was that he was beloved by in the clubhouse not only those who were teammates of his but but really respected by everybody because he was a professional's professional and of course nobody knew that better than the cardinal teammates themselves i was hoping to wake up today and really didn't sleep good last night thinking about the, all the times and, and good times i had with daryl and stuff of, of that nature and you know hoping it was just a bad dream and um it's just it's just uh just not good so um you know my prayers and thoughts are with his wife and his kids and his family and uh just hope um we can stay strong and, and try to keep going now, he was such a perfectionist and i know he'll want us to uh you know be perfect this year wouldn't be complete without you know won't be complete without him and uh neither will next year or, or baseball you know in the near future your heart goes out to their their kids and you know i think everybody went home last night and uh you know looked at their own families and yeah. And, you know, I know I had a hard time going to sleep last night, and, and uh, you know, I just kind of looked at what I had, and you, you tend to appreciate things a lot more. Well, I'll always remember, what, you know, what happened yesterday, and, and the best thing I think you do is talk about it, and, uh, you know, and eventually uh, have some, you know, stories and laughs uh, uh, when you can, and, uh, and celebrate uh, the fact that you were able to know Daryl, what a great person he is, and, you know, but as far as that, that team, I, my, really my deepest sympathy and uh, my prayers are, are with them and uh, his family, and um, I, I just uh, hope for the best here. Last night, today, uh, it's, it's, you know, I can't imagine calling. All right, this concludes it. I can't believe that this happened and you know I've been searching for answers and, and things like that and and to be honest the only reason that I feel like I needed to talk to you guys is for his family um, and for people around baseball to know how much he meant to me and how much you know I loved him and um, that, that's the only reason that I feel like this is necessary because as sometimes I say this goes far beyond baseball and it does but I know that I would never have the chance um, to meet Daryl if it wasn't for baseball. And uh, I'm a better person because I've met Daryl Kyle. And uh, my thoughts and prayers just uh, just go out to, to Flynn and the kids and, and the family. Right now it's for the best for us as a team to try to get back to work and try to put this, you know, behind us a little bit. Um, it was best for the fans, best for baseball. I, I just think that... You know, we made a decision and we stuck to it, and hopefully it'll be the right thing to do. I think that what makes it even more shocking, and certainly, guys, anytime any player, I mean, you know, young man, 
33. Daryl Carr was such a strong individual, both up here and, and, and certainly physically. Buck, I mean, you got to know him, certainly managing against him, but uh, he was almost with the Diamondbacks, right? That almost happened. Yeah, I spent, uh, you know, we spent a day trying to get him to come to Arizona, thought we had a good shot at him, and the thing that was most attractive to us, uh, you know, after having the meeting was Daryl didn't ask about the, how the locker room was, how the mode of travel was, how's the lounge, you know, what's the ballpark going to look like. He wanted to know if we were going to win in the term of his contract and how we were going to go about it. That's all he asked. He asked me a tough question. If I was your son, would you want me to come here and we'd have a chance to win? You know, and the thing that he cared so much about is what his teammates thought. And that's that's rare. And, you know, try to, and I evaluate players. I think about are they going to care about what their teammates think? And he was able to humble himself and help the young players coming up and, and share the knowledge that he had and you hear so, so many times players are unwilling to talk uh, on camera they really don't want to do it but you see you see so many guys that they want to talk you know and, and playing the game is kind of a refuge for players to get out there in that element the one element that they are comfortable in, in between the lines and i think that's part of the healing process and a tribute tribute to to daryl yeah you know i thinking about daryl myself you keep hearing the cardinal players talking about it was his turn. He always wanted the ball. And so I went back and just from a baseball standpoint, you know, he's had 216 starts since 1996. The only Glavin and Moltz are the only, Smoltz are the only guys that have had more, Glavin and Maddox have had more starts than this guy. I mean, that's the thing when you talk about uh, the Cardinals are going to miss on the field is the durability, what this guy brought. And Buck touched on it, making teammates better and the accountability. As a man, I think the biggest thing I'll miss is the consistency in his life and the type of person that he was, a family man. Uh, willing to work extra, spend time, and just the love he had for his wife and his kids. And I know the family is hurting, and our, our words may not be able to console them, but uh, tonight when you get a chance to pray, you pray for the Kyle family. You know, Harold, the other thing that hit me, too, here's a guy watching him pitch in Colorado. You never heard an excuse out there of his go. mouth. He always took the baseball, and I know looking over at him, I wonder if he ever thought, boy, should I have signed with Arizona? Never a, a, a glimpse of that. He was pitching for Colorado, and he went out there and, and really set, set the tone about how you handle that situation. He did the same thing in, in St. Louis. A lot of times, guys getting people out is one thing, but the tone you set and how you handle adversity. Walked in that clubhouse after a bad outing, and that was, you know, never pointing the finger at a fielder or a catcher or an umpire. You know, that was my responsibility. Right. The fact that, hey, nobody could pitch here in Colorado. No, 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 no. And I think that it's true, and you heard a lot of the his Colorado teammates say it, and um, was that he felt almost guilty about earning big bucks and not delivering in there. That that weighed heavily on him, that he wasn't holding up his end of the bargain, although God knows nobody tried harder than him. Uh, you're right. Words... We can only try, but the memories of Daryl Cobb will live on for a long, long time. And again, our prayers out to his wife, Lynn, his family, immediate family, and his larger family. Um, and uh, he will be missed uh, forever. When we return, an injury again to one of the biggest names in baseball. The beat just keeps on happening to Ken Griffey Jr. Highlights in a moment. The Sunday Night Report is brought to you by Pep Boys. Help for your car is just a Pep Boys away. Pep Boys, we're car people. This is Sports Center. A day after the death of Daryl Kyle, the Cards and Cubs return to the field. That's the most difficult thing a team's had to go through, but you gotta go through it. Would Sean Green stay red hot and propel the Dodgers into first? Meanwhile, out west, the Moose is loose and looking for win number 11. In a field minus Tiger Woods, two of the world's best try to take advantage. And how long of a putt would Chris Berman have to sink to make his own top plays? For Pete's sake, no Sampras in England? What would Michael Jordan's new role with the Wizards be next season? Now that he's got a cup, has this Red Wing decided to go for number two? Sports Center, right now.
Welcome to Sports Center with Linda Cohn. I'm Dan Patrick. We begin with baseball's attempt to heal from losing one of their own way too soon. When a man who was just 33 years of age, who appeared to be in good health and took no medication, dies in his sleep like Daryl Kyle did, there is a desperate need for answers. Sunday, some came. Initial findings of an autopsy showed that Kyle likely died from an 80 to 90 percent blockage of two of the three branches of the coronary artery. We're not expected to know more for at least four to six weeks when a final autopsy report is complete. Joining us now is ABC News medical editor Dr. Timothy Johnson. In spring training, it's customary for players to go through a complete physical and a stress test, which I'm going to believe that Daryl Kyle went through. If he did, are you surprised that that went undetected as far as the hardening of the arteries? I am somewhat surprised because a good stress test is certainly one way to help detect hidden coronary artery disease in a person without any symptoms. However, we know that that test is not perfect. The best test by far is the so-called angiogram, which involves injecting dye into the coronary arteries and taking x-ray pictures. And most physicians would not consider that in a 33-year-old person, especially one without any symptoms. Now, there are reports that uh, Daryl Kyle's father, dying in his uh, early 40s, had heart-related uh, heart problems. That would be another warning sign, I'm sure, that not only for Kyle, but also for the team physician. Absolutely. Uh, what we refer to as a family history of premature heart disease, meaning somebody, close relative, father, uncle, brothers who die, uh, in their 30s or 40s would be a big red flag for any physician. So if they knew about that family history, I'm sure it would lead them to be even more careful in investigating his situation. I guess really what hit home with all of this is that you can be a guy who doesn't go on the disabled list, you never miss starts, you're a machine when you go to the mound, and one day you don't wake up. Is it just that sudden with this type of disease? Well, it can be, and that's why heart attacks are the leading cause of death in both men and women in this country. And I guess the take-home message here is that you can't assume that just because you look good in front of a mirror in good physical shape, and just because you've had no symptoms, that you might not have coronary artery disease. Uh, certainly, if you have any other risk factors, a family history, smoking, high blood pressure, high blood fats, diabetes, etc., you need to get it checked out. You can't go by just how you appear. Dr. Timothy Johnson, ABC News medical editor. Thanks for joining us, doctor. Thank you. And now there was this game, a game the St. Louis Cardinals voted unanimously to play because, in their words, they knew Darrell would want them to. In Kyle's 11-plus years in the majors, he never missed a start. He never went on the disabled list. Darrell was scheduled to start this game. It's why the Cardinals wanted to play, to honor their fallen teammate. When asked where his players were going to get their strength, manager Tony La Russa said, we're going to get it from Daryl Kyle to Wrigley. Daryl Kyle's number 57 on the marquee outside of Wrigley Field. The only thing that was displayed on that marquee, Kyle's jersey hanging in the Cardinals dugout. The Cubs PA announcer. The St. Louis Cardinals and Major League Baseball experienced the tragic loss of a very special person, pitcher Daryl Kyle. Daryl made a difference in so many lives. As an example on the baseball field, as a compassionate member of the St. Louis community and as a loving husband and father. His love and commitment to his family, friends, and teammates will be truly missed. At this time, we ask that you please join us in a moment of silence to remember St. Louis Cardinals pitcher, number 57, Daryl Kyle. It was definitely not the same Sunday night. Sammy Sosa does not sprint to right. The umpires honoring Kyle. The cards wearing patches on their sleeves with the number 57. Your leader, Fata, for the Cardinals, Fernando Vini. Daryl Kyle. An incredibly difficult task for the Cardinals. Father. Forging ahead against the Cubs without Daryl Kyle. An autopsy shows heart disease claimed the life of the 33-year-old pitcher. Life is so precious and you realize in an instant, just how quick it can be gone. Tonight, St. Louis players and fans are still trying to cope with the latest blow to the Cardinals club. Good evening and thank you for joining us. With heavy hearts, the Cardinals took the field tonight for the first time since Daryl Kyle's tragic death. The Cardinals voted unanimously to play tonight's game, a game that Daryl Kyle was supposed to start. 
Malcolm Briggs joins us with more on what had to be a strange game under the lights at Wrigley Field. Malcolm? Strange for those guys, you two, and strange just to watch this game. You know, we were watching in the sports office. Greetings. Up until tonight, there was probably no way you could visualize a no-frills baseball game between the Cards and Cubs. But that is exactly what we saw. No music, no fanfare, no seventh-inning stretch, just runs, hits, and airs played in gut-wrenching pain. All of Wrigley stood still as everybody paid tribute to DK. All the cards wore number 57 on their sleeves. Others wore black wristbands, while others gave him props on their lid. All while the rookie, Jason Simon Tatchy, took to the heart of the diamond, filling in for Daryl Kyle. A lot of pressure on his shoulders, and the Cubs scored two runs off of him in the second, and then in the third, Moises Salou jumps out of the park. That made it 4-0. It would be a sold-out crowd full of long faces at this normally joyous place. But finally, Albert Pujol delivered a little uplifting moment for the Cardinals, pointing up to the heavens with that shot there as the Cardinals come up short in a game that they probably really weren't focused on. The final in this one was 8-3. to three. If you watch the game, it was easy to see that the cards were just going through the motions, not to mention... The players were not motivated to go and play this game. They played because Kyle would not have had it any other way. Frank Cusimano joins us from Chicago with more. Obviously, the Cardinals will never forget this weekend in Chicago. And imagine the life of Flynn Kyle. On Saturday morning, she's shopping for homes in San Diego. On Saturday afternoon, she finds out that the love of her life has passed away. She flies here Saturday night. And then on Sunday morning, she visits her husband in the morgue. Tonight she flew back to St. Louis and tried to explain to her three kids that their daddy is not coming home. How are Kyle's teammates coping? Well, they spoke before tonight's game. Me personally, and I know my team would like to just thank everybody that's in it and for understanding what we're going through and understanding what the family's going through, going through and uh, that's it. That's all I got to say. I think uh, we really need to be uh, careful what we say and what we what we do in the next few weeks as far as the family is concerned. It's very hard on Flynn and uh, you know I just send my love to, to her and her family and um, I guess that's all I have. Maybe Kyle's closest friend on the team is catcher Mike Matheny. Now in the past Matheny has caught all of Jason Simon Tatchy starts. He did not start tonight. Emotionally, he may not have been ready to play baseball, but he did inscribe Kyle's number 57 on his forearm. In Chicago, with photographer Tom Stasiak, I'm Frank Cusimano. And thanks a lot, Frankie. You know, Mike, the one thing about this is we don't know when these guys are going to be ready to play baseball again. I mean, we still have a long ways to go before they can even start the healing process. You get the feeling it's going to take a long time. Absolutely. All right, Malcolm, thank you. Thanks, Malcolm. The Cook County Medical Examiner says it was atherosclerosis, or blockage in the vessels that supply blood to the heart, that led to Kyle's death. The preliminary autopsy report specifically says two of the three branches of Kyle's coronary artery were 80 to 90 percent blocked. A complete report will be available in four to six weeks. We asked a local cardiologist how a professional athlete in good physical condition could die of heart disease at the young age of 33. I think the lesson is that uh, you're, you know, you're really not too young to have a heart attack, or you're not too healthy to have a heart attack. Dr. Taniucci says he sees patients in their 30s and 40s with heart disease all the time. This would be one of the major arteries that uh, supply the heart with blood, and the other one in this particular case would be here. He calls it one of the hazards of Western civilization. He's never treated Daryl Kyle, but he says what is unusual is that the Cardinals pitcher apparently never had any warning signs. It's very unusual that uh, he would not have any symptoms and had a sudden event like this, but it shows that uh, these things can happen. Symptoms of heart disease can include pain in the chest, arms, neck, or abdomen, especially on exertion, sweating, shortness of breath, nausea. People at highest risk for heart disease are those with diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, smokers, and those with a family history of heart disease. Daryl Kyle's father died of a heart attack in his mid-40s. More than 61 million people in this country have heart disease. It's the leading cause of death. In 1999, 40% of all deaths were due to cardiovascular disease. It will account for about one and a half million uh, heart attacks a year. 
Dr. Taniuchi says Kyle's degree of blockage may have caused the heart to start beating irregularly. Such arrhythmias happen suddenly and often without warning. The only treatment is to shock the heart back into rhythm. Some people just do not have the, uh, uh, the warning signs, and sometimes those patients are at the highest risk because uh, they don't know when their heart is not getting enough blood supply. Now, the Cook County Medical Examiner also tells News Channel 5 a bag of what appeared to be marijuana was found in Kyle's hotel room, but he gave no indication that drugs or illegal substances were involved in Kyle's death. For the second time in less than a week, Bush Stadium has become a place for Cardinal fans to pay their respects. Um, you know, I just feel like I'm part of the Cardinal family, and I hurt just like everybody else in St. Louis hurts, and uh, I was just compelled to be here just like Friday for Jack Buck, and just had to come. A memorial to Daryl Kyle is spreading toward the one created after the loss of Jack Buck Tuesday night. Many fans believe the tragedies will bring the Cardinals closer together. As one fan put it, the team won't let someone like Daryl Kyle down. Go, go, go. Nice shot. Kyle's death was also the topic of conversation at Little League fields across St. Louis. Many of these youngsters aspire to be a great player just like Kyle. Nice Our coach has been saying, you know, if we just all act like how Daryl Kyle was, he was always ready uh, to go play the game. He never argued about what was going on in the game. If we just play like that, then we'll win. Kyle's body was released today to his family. Funeral arrangements are pending. Daryl Kyle and his wife Flynn just purchased a home in San Diego, but for almost a year, they had lived at a home in Clayton. Tonight, News Channel 5 Steve Jankowski spoke with a neighbor the Kyles relied on like family. Steve? Okay, most of us saw Daryl Kyle in a Cardinal uniform. Dr. Jerome Cohen knew him as someone much greater. You know, and we're a generation apart. I mean, he's, he's young enough to be my son. I have a son his age. Uh, so it, it wasn't, uh, you know, the pally pally kind of, it was just neighbors and, and family. I mean, Dr. I Cohen stresses baseball was the public side of Daryl Kyle. But he was fortunate enough to see the private side, which revolved around Kyle's family, including spending every possible moment with five-year-old twins. Like both of the kids are very well trained, very well behaved. They're wonderful, wonderful kids and great examples of Daryl and Flynn. And, and I think, you know, Daryl leaves us all too soon. And I think um, it's going to be a tragic loss in that family. A loss Cohen and his wife had to hide from the Kyle children as they took care of them while their mother dealt with matters in Chicago, a task he calls the most difficult thing he's ever had to do. Uh, we spent the day with the kids and um, we entertained them, kept them away from TV and, and uh, radio and, and things that might give them a hint that you know something had happened to their dad. I'm sure they won't understand, but their relationship with their father was such that it's going to be a huge void and I feel uh, most uh, for, for Flynn and, and the kids. And for Dr. Cohen, this hits especially hard. His medical specialty is cardiology. Ironically and sadly, it's an area where I have a special interest in, in professionally, and um, here I am uh, helpless in this situation, only helping as a friend and neighbor. Well, we're going to miss a wonderful man, not just a great baseball player, but a wonderful father and a wonderful husband. Now, during tonight's game, Kyle's jersey hung in the Cardinal dugout. Dr. Cohen feels Kyle's number should be retired and join the other Cardinal heroes at Bush Stadium. Mike? Thank you, Steve. Summing up tonight's top story, the Cook County Medical Examiner says Daryl Kyle likely died of coronary heart disease. Two of the three chambers of his coronary artery were 80 to 90 percent blocked. The medical examiner will conduct toxicology tests but gave no indication Kyle's death was drug-related. Well, two fires have joined into one, and it's threatening homes in Arizona. The huge blaze stretches 50 miles across. Tonight, residents are on the run, trying to flee the flames as they approach several towns. And a local...
good evening again. I'm Mike Bush. Thanks for keeping us company for another edition of Sports Plus, perhaps the most difficult edition we've ever had to do. From the passing of Jack Buck to the unexpected death of Daryl Kyle, it's been an emotional challenge for all St. Louisans, and we hope tonight that we can at least give you the latest information and put it all in some kind of perspective. Let's begin in Chicago. The Cardinals decided to honor their fallen teammate by going forward with tonight's game against the Cubs. The team unanimously voted to play, but it was a somber Wrigley Field tonight. And as a loving husband and father, at this time, we ask that you please join us in a moment of silence to remember St. Louis Cardinals pitcher, number 57, Daryl Kyle. Thank you. By All of Wrigley Ceiling, Field standing mound, still Wrigley for Daryl Kyle and rookie Jason Simon Tatchy took the mound starting in Kyle's place, paying tribute to him in his own way. The Cardinal team wore initials JFB on their left sleeve and the number 57 on the right. And with heavy hearts, it was time to play some baseball. Cubs would have a 2 0 lead in the third. Moises Salou off Simon Tachi. That's a two run shot, and the Cubs go up 4 0. Cubs took an 8 0 lead into the seventh inning stretch, normally a jovial time, but tonight fans paying their respects. And judging by the faces in the dugout, it was clear that baseball was not the first thing on anyone's mind. But in the top of the eighth, Albert Pujol sends the Kerry Wood pitch to the heavens. This is a home run. And as he comes home, he'll point to the sky. Cards do fall in the game, 8 to 3. Simon Tatchy suffers his first Major League loss after five wins. Pujol's home run was number 16 on the year, but the numbers don't really matter tonight. For the Cardinals, it was just the first step in the healing process. Obviously, this wasn't your typical game tonight. Our Frank Cusimano is with the Cardinals in Chicago, and Frank joins us now live from Wrigley Field. Frank? Well, Mike, you're right. Normally, after a Cubs-Cardinals game, we spend hours dissecting all the great plays on defense, the great hits, the great pitching. But it doesn't seem really appropriate tonight, not when you know back in St. Louis a wife is going to bed without her husband and three children will never see their father again. Outside. Inside. The man was not forgotten at Wrigley Field on this night. So baseball returns, swings from the cage, throws from the mound. Ground balls were scooped. Fly balls were caught. But there is no question the theme of the night was Daryl Kyle. The Cardinals even made sure his jerseys hung high in the dugout. The Cub fans even gave the Cardinals a standing ovation at the end of their batting practice. Chicago has been nothing but respectful, right down to the moment of silence before the game. I don't think you can ask uh, a Chicago Cub whether it's right to play this game or not. Um, I think that was a, a decision that had to be made by um, Mrs. Kyle and the Cardinal organization. And um, as a Chicago Cub player and being here today, I think we need to respect that decision and do what they would want. It affects everybody. You know, I know I was talking to uh, Ron Sano. He thinks about that every time he latches the, the door behind him, you know, on the road, you know. So it, it affects people in, in different ways. You know, everybody tries to be a tough guy on the field, but we all have feelings and, and players have families. Um, so our heart goes out to uh, the Kyle family. Now, normally, Cardinal manager Tony La Russa is a guy who wants to manage a baseball game 365 days a year. Well, tonight he was just asked, is it a good idea that the Cardinals have the day off tomorrow? And he said, you're right. It's a very good idea that our players get a chance to spend some time with their families. That's the story from Wrigley. When we come back, we'll hear from the Cardinal manager. I'm Frank Lusamano Live. Let's send it back to Mike in the studio. All right, Frank, thank you very much. Frank Cusimano live tonight at Wrigley Field, and we'll have more from Frank later in the broadcast. Members of Cardinal Nation have had a lot of practice at dealing with their emotions over the course of the past week. The Jack Buck Memorial continues to grow outside Bush Stadium two days after his funeral, and now nearby another smaller memorial is taking shape. This one unexpected and dedicated to the memory of number 57, Daryl Kyle. Two balls, two strikes, two aboard. 
he was the heart of the Cardinals. Delivery from Daryl Kyle to Troy Gloss. Fastball inside corner, he's gone. You know, when it's battle time, you know, get out there. He's he's the guy that gets you going before the games in the clubhouse. And, uh, you know, if you have anything to ask, especially the pitchers, you know, they go to him. And he led by example. Daryl Kyle worked 2,165 innings in the major leagues without spending a day on the disabled list. That doesn't mean he was never hurt. He just always took the ball. I don't think I'm a leader. Um, I'm just a guy trying to do my job the best I can. Uh, if somebody learns something that gets better because of that or watching me, well, great. It's more of a compliment to me than, than anything. Kyle came up to the big leagues with the Houston organization and was strictly a fastball slider pitcher. But the Astros had so many pitchers develop arm trouble that they asked their pitchers to stop throwing the slider. So Kyle came up with a curveball that became one of the major league's best. The whole object of a curveball is you, you want to get it spinning as fast as you can in, in, a, in a rotation that'll bring the ball down. So uh, there's different kinds of grips. Um, there's different ways to throw it. Uh, the one that I found works best for me is I throw a one finger curveball and it, it's held similar to that right there. Kyle left Houston as a free agent and after two disappointing years in Colorado, he was traded to the Cardinals in 1999. He made friends wherever he went and tears are being shed in clubhouses throughout the majors. I couldn't believe it, and I still don't believe it. Um, DK was a very special uh, player that I had. Uh, I recruited him uh, the Colorado. You know, he signed with me as a free agent uh, in Colorado. Um, years I had him there, he never, ever complained about the altitude. Um, he was always a um, uh, perfect um, teammate. He'd go bend over backwards to do something for anybody. And Kyle felt at home in St. Louis, winning 20 games his first year here and 16 games last year. But in typical fashion, he would never take any credit for his own success. The way I look at things uh, as a starting pitcher, um, without offense, without defense, and without um, a coaching staff that cares, and without an organization that cares, and without a catch, you know, a catcher uh, that cares, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm just a guy throwing a ball. Two, three. Kyle was much more than that to the Cardinals and to several charities in town. He teamed up with Cardinals Care and the St. Louis Police Department to dedicate Daryl Kyle Field last September giving inner city kids a place to play baseball. Eventually my dreams were fulfilled. So my goal or my hope or, or another dream of mine is that somebody else's dream will start on this field and uh, in the future, uh, everything they aspire to be happens. Daryl Kyle was a devoted father and husband, a friend and a teammate. In his last game as a Cardinal, he pitched the team into first place. The best part about uh, doing well or, or having a good season or our pitching well as a pitching staff is that when you walk into the clubhouse and the day you're pitching, the team knows you have a chance to win. seen it all well it's Ford truck season and you ain't seen nothing yet because not only can you get zero nine financing or up to 2500 cash back on America's best-selling f-150 but if you buy during truck season you'll also get a bedliner on any new f-series truck at no extra charge see your quality Ford store on both sides of the river personally I think being successful means going that extra mile one of the ways we do that is to be the only tire store in the area to offer an unconditional road hazard warranty with free replacement for one year on every tire, every day. It's not prorated. It's not based on tire wear. If you have any problems anywhere, anytime within your first 12 months, we take care of it free of charge. It's that simple. Another great reason why you ought to go to Auto Tire. V6 Nissan Altima, North American Car of the Year.
Your Gateway Pontiac dealers are in overdrive and have three great ways to get into a new Grand Am. 16, Oakland 14-1 and one in interleague, interleague play. Chavez was 1 for 16 prior to his two-run homer. Mulder has won six straight starts. The Reds demoted outfielder Austin Kearns before the game. Angels looking to sweep. July 1st. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety subjected full-size pickups to their crash test, a test performed at even higher speeds than those conducted by the government. In the end, Tundra earned the highest overall safety rating for full-size pickups. Toyota Tundra. When we say better from the ground up, we mean a lot better. Cardinals pitcher Daryl Kyle remembered today in ballparks all over the country, including Houston, where his jersey was hung up in the dugout. And our thoughts and prayers are with, with Flynn Kyle and her children. And Daryl's family. And he was a great kid. Uh, did a tremendous job for me when he was with me and just a superhuman being, and you know, we're all going to miss him, and I feel for his family. He never ever uh, once complained about this game or about how uh, anything has gone wrong, you know, like the team itself, or he never made excuses. That was the Daryl Kyle we know. Now, I mentioned earlier that this has been the most difficult week for St. Louis sports fans in recent memory. The death of Jack Buck, while not unexpected, hit us all hard because of what he meant to St. Louis. But then, it's followed just days later by the tragic, unexpected death of 33-year-old pitcher Daryl Kyle. Tonight, some perspective. We're lucky in St. Louis to have some of the best sports journalists in the country, pros who work at the network level, and have pretty much seen it all. Joining me now live, Jay Randolph, Bob Costas, and Dan Deardorff. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. I mentioned you guys have pretty much seen it all. Have you ever seen anything like a week like this, Bob? No. No, I haven't either. This has been uh, unbelievable. I don't know what you could liken it to. And you guys have been around a lot, and you've seen death, you've seen tragedy, mm -hmm. but for one city in such a short period of time, how do you cope? Uh, all we can do is just try to move on. They're so different. Right. Jack was mm -hmm. expected. We all knew that Jack was struggling, but Daryl was, is, is, it's, you know, 40 years, what, 45 years difference in age between the two, and it just, it, it's shocking, and it, shock takes a long time to, to get over. And even though what happened with Jack was, of course, sad, there was something truly beautiful and uplifting and wonderful about this past week regarding Jack Buck. Yeah. Yes. There's only deep sadness and tragedy in the second event. Yeah. I am thankful for one thing. I was thinking about it driving down this evening. The Cardinals have 13 days here at home. Mm -hmm. And boy, that's much better than 13 days on the road at this yeah. point in the schedule. I think they'll be able, hopefully, to, you know, get a memorial service done for Daryl and uh, have him laid away and uh, try to gather themselves over this period of time they've got. and. Uh, but I, 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 just, uh, I just can't imagine uh, this happening the way it did, and it just shows how uh, fragile life is. Let's, let's talk about, you, you were on the Cardinals, the football Cardinals, when J.B. Kane yes. passed away. Yes. So you know how a tragedy can affect a baseball team or a football right. team or a professional sports team? How did that affect you guys? I don't think we ever recovered from it over the entire course of the season. Uh, you need to focus 100% on your duties when you're playing a professional sport. And when J.B. Kane died, we found it impossible to focus. We, we realized that we had devoted our lives to playing a game, and all of a sudden that game was no longer nearly as important as we thought it was. Mm. That, that his death for the first time, I think, made a lot of us grow up, it made us shed some of the immaturity mm -hmm. that, that we had been carrying with us for a long, long time. I'm not sure I ever looked at the game there ever was an, quite the same. There was another situation, and I, I just thought about it this morning, Chuck Drulis. Yes. 
and having to land the plane in Arkansas. That's to exactly. We're on our way to Houston. Take his right. body off, and that was very tough for all of us who uh, knew him and loved him. I mean, and uh, of course, uh, this is just uh, as as Bob said. You know, the the Buck thing has been uh, palatable because it was expected and uh, the outpouring of love from this community yeah, and amazing. all over this country for this mm -hmm. man. It's just marvelous. Well, they're unrelated. Yeah, in right. the Oh, sense. completely. Because our, our plate was so full with Jack right. and, and we're just totally unprepared for what's happened to Daryl Kyle. And, and the thing with Jack was handled with such grace oh. and such dignity in, yeah. in, every, in every, every respect. And at least in, the, in that sense, you could say, this is, this is gone as it should go. And then just as people are digesting that, bam. Were you surprised, Bob, that the Cardinals played the game tonight? No. I, I think it made sense to play it. Uh, it was probably helpful that there were a few extra hours because it was a Sunday night game. And I think the rationale that Kyle never missed a start and it was his turn to pitch, that made sense to me. So if your manager, Tony La Russa, because you were in the locker room when J.B. Kane died, if, if your manager, Tony La Russa, what do you tell your team? How do you forge forward? To be, to go home, to hug your kids, to realize that you have a lot of maybe unattended business that maybe it's best to take care of, but you're a professional, and this is where being a professional really shows. You, know, you have to do your job, yeah, and Mike, that's what it boils down to. I think we're very lucky to have Larusa here. He's always, uh, to me, been one of the brighter men in baseball very bright and has a great chemistry usually with his teams and of course he took a team through a terrible time the earthquake in san francisco mm -hmm. at the height of the world series and mm -hmm. got them through that with a championship and uh, he'll figure it out and uh, so will these guys because uh, well, as you say you're professionals and uh, but like you say it uh, it's a wound that's not going to heal very quickly yeah, I hope this is an appropriate thing to say. You often gain insight into people under extreme circumstances. For whatever reason, Tony La Russa, who the record says is one of the best managers of his generation, and who those of us who know him feel is a quality person. He's an intelligent person. He's genuine. He's dedicated to his craft. He has a lot of feeling. He doesn't have the gregarious personality that made people embrace Whitey Herzog here in St. Louis. Right. There's always been a thing with La Russa where to some people, he was less than the, than the sum of his parts and the sum of his record. <laughs> this is a hell of a man, Tony yeah, La mm -hmm. And the way he's carried himself through this, I think, has transmitted to Cardinal fans in a way that none of the victories, none of the arguments over a call at home plate really have. I think there's a connection that's taken place here out of all this that might put him in a different light for some of the people who didn't feel so warmly toward him. Really good point. All right, we're going to continue with Jay Randolph, Bob Costas, and Dan Deard Deardorf in just a moment. And before we go to break, here's tonight's Johnny Mac Sports Plus trivia question. Remember, if you have a question and answer, log on to ksdk.com, and you'll have a chance to win two tickets to an upcoming Cardinals game. The answer to this question and more from Dan, Bob, and Jay when we come back. To go, came home. It's definitely a baseball town. Zero down. Thousands below invoice. Delivers. At Elko Chevrolet. With over 1,000 new Chevy cars, trucks, vans, and sport utility vehicles to choose from. Nobody can sell you a Chevy for less. Zero down. Thousands below invoice. Delivers. On every 2002 Chevy Cavalier, Malibu, Monte Carlo, and Impala. Zero down. Thousands below invoice. Delivers. On every 2002 Chevy Avalanche, Trailblazer, Tahoe, and Suburban. Go for the selection. Go for the gold. At Elko Chevrolet. Missouri's only gold medal dealer. Tuesday, a Show Me St. Louis primetime of this. Oh, no he has been such a strong character and has been out front at the memorial service. He was he was wonderful at the funeral. But then yesterday, Bob, he had to go on the air mm -hmm. and announce this to the world that Daryl Kyle had passed away. He's, he's handled everything as well as anyone could possibly handle it. It's one thing to have skill and talent. It's another thing to have what his dad had, a sense of the moment and a sense of what's decent and what's right, and he has it. Yeah. He's got a very strong will like his father. He has some of his father's humor, and uh, he also has a better feel for television than Jack, and Jack would have been the first to tell yeah. you that. Yeah, 
And wasn't that one of the wonderful things about Jack Buck, his wit? Oh. Well, oh, oh. I, I've always maintained that as successful as Jack was as uh, an announcer, I, I think Jack could have been Johnny Carson. We talked about that, that the other day. He could have done the Tonight I Show. I think he could have done that. I think Jack could have done a monologue. I think Jack could have interviewed people. I think he would have been fabulous with the quip, the one-liner. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when... when uh, the tomahawk hit the wrong spot after Ed Ames, Aaron <laughs> Toss. I guarantee you that Jack Buck would have had something every you bit bet. as witty as Johnny had to say. Mm. I think he, I think he could have pulled that off easily. You know, I, I always told people this is long before the last few years when it was apparent that the end was near. I, I told people 15 years ago when I first started to work at, at NBC, you think based on Monday Night Football on the radio or those football games on CBS, you think Jack Buck is very good. But if you lived in St. Louis, you would know he was great. Yes. I always felt that if you listened to Vin Scully do one baseball game and Jack Buck do one, nine people out of ten would say Scully is the better announcer. But if you listen to the whole season, you wouldn't be so sure. Mm -hmm. and, and would there have been the response? I mean, you can go to Vin Scully, maybe even Ernie Harwell, some of the great announcers still working today, or maybe of all time, would there have been the response in any city like there was to Jack Buck in St. Louis? Not exactly no, the same. no, I don't, I don't think, not only in the city, but in the region, and then when I think about all of the wonderful columns that have been written, and all of the letters and the emails that have come from all over this country, right. yeah. and the interviews that I've watched with ball players on almost every team just people that knew him you know i was thinking the other day what could i say tonight uh, because we've said everything mm -hmm. about this man and you know what quality i admired about him more than anything else in all of the years that i worked with him in all of the years that i was with him traveled with him at his side I never, and I realized this just the other day, I never, ever heard him complain. Never complain about the plane being late, how bad the food was, that we had to sit through a rain delay, that we, you know, whatever it was. Problems, we all have problems, especially in this business. But I never have ever heard the man oh, he complain. Was, he was tough. He tough. came out of a different time. I heard him complain about Bob Hyland one time. <laughs> he said Hyland called him the day after baseball season was over and said, Jack, it's time for you to go back to work. <laughs> well, of course, that, Jack he said that son of a yeah. <laughs> He would complain about people by making a joke about it. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, know, you know, it's one of the, I, I thought that, and people, people by and large got it right. You know, if you read the obituary in the New York Times, it's appreciative, it's very nice. People would say, you know, if only you could be so lucky when your time has passed to have something that nice said about you. But it only got 10% of it. But those who really knew, those around St. Louis, or those on the baseball beat, uh, you know, from other precincts, but they knew him from coming through here, not from a distance, they, they got the essence of it. And the essence of it was not just his talent, although the talent was considerable, and not just that he did good deeds, although he did more good deeds than any of us could count. Yeah. The guy was not a saint. He was a human being. Oh, that's give, the word, give human me, being. Give me compassion and humanity over piety and rectitude anytime. Here's a guy, if there was an off day between L.A. and San Francisco, he went to Vegas. Yes, he did. But if there was an off day here, he went to a veteran's hospital. Yeah, that's that's right. not a saint. That's yes. a man. Yeah. A hell of a man, yeah, If they'd only yeah. had a veteran's hospital in Vegas. Oh, man. <laughs> he never would have left. He'd have never come off. He never would have left. <laughs> but what we... to put a franchise there. <laughs> but, guys, what we saw last week would, at the memorial service at Bush Stadium was something that you only see for heads of state. They oh, said the last yeah. time that, that this has ever happened in baseball Babe Ruth. was Babe Ruth, right. who may be the greatest figure in baseball history, no maybe no in question. American sports no history. Question. What well, is it about St. Louis? What is it about Jack Buck? I, well, I think you have to say it's more about Jack Buck than it is about... He, he just won the admiration of everyone. Uh, you know, Bob used the word region. Yes, we are... We love our heroes, and we've all been the beneficiaries of that. This is a tremendous town. It's yeah. why we all still make St. Louis our homes. That's right. We know we're not going to find it better anywhere no. else. No. <laughs> and I, Jack discovered that a long time ago. You need a combination of things. Um, you need 
you need a special person, and he was that. And I hope this makes sense. I'm not, I'm not drawing a parallel of historical significance. But suppose Jackie Robinson breaks in in 1957. He's the same person. He has yeah. the same qualities. He's admiral. Can't have the same effect. If Lincoln is president and it's not the Civil War, he's not the greatest president. Okay. So you've got Jack Buck, and he has all these qualities as a person and as a broadcaster. But you need the team, this team. It's not like New York. Red Barber, Mel Allen, Vin Scully, Russ Hodges. There's three teams in New York. Right. Which one is your favorite? Dodger fans hated Mel Allen. Mm -hmm. You got one team, and it's the team for a whole region, especially prior to expansion. So That's he begins right. in a certain era when that romance and innocence is strong, and he remains the link to that era even after the game and the times surrounding the game change. He goes from Musial to McGuire and all points in between. So you need the time, not just the era, but the amount of time that he put in, put in, he becomes venerable. You need the special circumstances of this team, its place in history, this town, the way Dan says we feel about these people, and then you have to have the person who can pull all those things together, a multifaceted person like Jack. And he had a 50,000 watt vehicle yep. yes, that you could hear in yes, 48 yes, states. Yeah. When, when that was the way, when it wasn't oh. ESPN or, or shows oh. like yours where you could see highlights of everything, if you're in Iowa, Jack and Harry, that's baseball. Right. That's what you look forward to all night long or all the day home, long. The home games, he would leave the ballpark and go to Musial and Biggies and do a show with music and guests there until right. midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning. I remember I replaced him on that show when I came to town. Well, before we wrap it up, is, is there something that you think you can say about St. Louis? Do you think that, that this town will be hit harder than, say, almost any other town from what has happened this yeah, week? It, oh, it means more here. Yeah, sure. The people... Here in this community are remarkable sports fans. First of all, they're very remarkable people. I just came back from living nine years in South Florida, and I'm never so glad to be back to some place <laughs> in my life. But I mean that sincerely. Uh, I came here in 1966 and uh, lived here, you know, for 25 years, and uh, this is really the place I've always wanted to be. Uh, uh, this community the people in it, the feeling they have for one another, the feeling they have for the Cardinals, the feeling they had for Jack. And Jack was more than just a sportscaster, remember right. that. He was a man of wide, wide abilities. But this community, em you said, embraces. Well, and, I, and I only have one thing to say. Yeah. This town has had the good fortune over many, many decades to have so many talented people be behind a microphone and to deliver the news or the sports, but primarily yeah. the sports. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this town has become sophisticated in knowing what is good and what is bad. And I, and I applaud St. Louis because they realized what they had in Jack Buck. Yeah. They never yeah. took him for granted, his brilliance, his humanity. They appreciated every aspect of Jack Buck, yeah, and that was expressed all this yeah, week. He had, he had a texture to him as oh, a person no. and as a broadcaster that national television and radio only got a portion of. Oh, yeah. But in St. Louis, over the course of time, every little shading on that whole spectrum played itself out. People got it. They understood what they had. Yes, this community deserved him, and he deserved them. And it was magical. It really was. Gentlemen, it's magical always being with you. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much you, for Mike. joining us. How come your chair is taller than ours? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a long torso. <laughs> a long, a long torso. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, the, that's the Letterman technique. You no, know. Yeah. No, Every no, guest on Letterman is in a hole, right? Well, not only that, but that's my you got to turn all the way back over the shoulder. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Turn up here. I don't think it's Smith, Corks went into right down the line. It may go. Gibson swings and a fly ball to deep right field. This is going to be a home run. Unbelievable. A home run for Gibson. And the Dodgers have won. We all so fondly remember Daryl Kyle and, and, and know that the Cardinals want to move on, but, but yet here, here's a guy that was a professional's professional. And all of our feelings out to their family uh, on a very difficult day. Really just, just talk about baseball, the fun and games, kind of put in perspective, isn't it, guys? Yeah, it really exactly. is. We, uh, words certainly cannot properly describe the scene in Chicago on Sunday night as words prove totally inadequate to describe the discovery on Saturday that St. Louis Cardinals pitcher Darrell Kyle never woke up from his sleep on Friday night. The 33-year-old Kyle, a pro's pro, died in his Chicago hotel room, hence causing waves of grief throughout the Cardinals family for the second time this week, causing waves of grief throughout every level of baseball 
and understandably causing the postponement of Saturday's game between the Cards and Cubs. Sunday came the coroner's report, whose initial findings of an autopsy showed Kyle had an 80 to 90 percent narrowing of two of the three branches of the coronary artery, which was, quote, the likely cause of death. Kyle's father died shortly after a heart attack in his mid-40s back in 1993. The complete results of the autopsy could take four to six weeks, but back to now, Sunday night, somehow, some way, at Wrigley Field, the Cardinals attempted to play ball without their teammate and dear friend. They voted at a team meeting unanimously on Saturday night to play Sunday's game in a game Kyle was expected to start, partly because Kyle himself rarely missed one. Sunday night baseball on ESPN here with the highlights from Wrigley, Bill Pito. All right, Chris, thank you. The Wrigley Field marquee honoring Daryl Kyle, number 57, hanging in the cards dugout. Before the game, a moment of silence to honor Kyle, who was supposed to start this game. The St. Louis Cardinals and Major League Baseball experienced the tragic loss of a very special person, pitcher Daryl Kyle. Daryl made a difference in so many lives. As an example on the baseball field, as a compassionate member of the St. Louis community, and as a loving husband and father. His love and commitment to his family, friends, and teammates will be truly missed. At this time, we ask that you please join us in a moment of silence to remember St. Louis Cardinals pitcher, number 57, Daryl Kyle. It comes now. Then the players yeah, taking the field. Manager, Sammy leading Payne. the Cubs out. Cards uh, wearing 57 on their left sleeve to honor their he's got a base hit. former pitcher, Fernando Vina, to kick off of Kerry Wood starts the game. First batter of the contest. Vina pointing to the sky. He would not score. Jason Simantachi in there. Kyle supposed to start. Simantachi got the start. Perfect 5 and 0 so far in his major league career. But Alex Gonzalez in the bottom of the second. Solo home run is eighth. 1 0 Chicago. Bottom three, one on for Moises Alou. It's 2 0 Cubs. And Alou, way out of there, in fact, onto the streets. Two run shot. And it's 4 0 Chicago. Seventh inning stretch. The crowd at Wrigley full of signs, sir. Daryl Kyle. Top of the eighth. Albert Pujols against Wood. Two run shot is 16th. Breaks up Terry Wood shutout. Pujols goes right to Kyle's jersey in the dugout to pay respect as he comes into the dugout cards would add another but it's Chicago that goes on to win by the final score of eight to three as Kerry Wood goes eight innings gives up two earned runs gets to win his seventh of the year Simantachi the loss his first of the season gave up four earned runs in four innings of work but after the game the stats the last thing on anybody's mind thank you here with Moises Alou and you had the home run today, but tell me about the atmosphere of playing this game in light of the death yesterday of Daryl Kyle. Uh, I, mean, I, can't, I can't even really tell you how everybody felt uh, about pl uh, playing the game today. You know, I know it meant a lot for, especially for the Cardinals, it meant a lot. One of the most difficult in baseball, but uh, it was a very difficult day to play a game. Uh, you didn't see many celebration. Uh, we just went out there and played our game because we had to play, and everybody's really you know, sad about what happened, and you know, especially myself. I knew DK very well. Everybody knew DK. Everybody knew what kind of guy he was, and uh, you know, we had to play today. But uh, you know, win or lose today, whatever happened, you know, everybody's mind really wasn't in the game. You know, we, the outcome of the game was better for us. We won the game, but. You know, everybody's not very happy still about it. Well, I was going to ask you, how competitive can you be? This is the first place team in your division. You guys are trying to fight back into the playoff picture. But how competitive can you be on a day like this? Well, you have to put uh, the personal side uh, first. And uh, it was tough, to tell you the truth. You know, coming in the clubhouse today, you know, coming out for batting practice, even when the game started, you can, you can really feel it, feel the atmosphere. It wasn't that great uh, around the ballpark. Uh, you know, I'm glad today's game is over because it was tough for us, and I'm sure it was a lot tougher for the Cardinals. It's over. It's a Cubs victory, but certainly a game that doesn't mean as much as it might have. We send it now back to the studio. I think 
Daryl Kyle was beloved, obviously, by his wife, Flynn, and her three young children, and all of us, uh, our hearts are out to them, and that's, that just sounds so pale to say it. I think the one thing that we all knew about Daryl Kyle was that he was beloved by in the clubhouse, not only those who were teammates of his, but, but really respected by everybody because he was a professional's professional. And, of course, nobody knew that better than the Cardinal teammates themselves. I was hoping to wake up today and really didn't sleep good last night thinking about the, all the times and, and good times I had with Daryl and stuff of, of that nature and, you know, hoping it was just a bad dream. And um, it's just, it's just, uh, just not good. So, um, you know, my prayers and thoughts are with his wife and his kids and his family and uh, just hope um, we can stay strong and, and try to keep going. He was such a perfectionist and I know he'll want us to, uh, you know, be perfect. This year wouldn't be complete without, you know, won't be complete without him and uh, neither will next year or, or baseball. Know, in the near future. And your heart goes out to their, their kids and you know, I think everybody went home last night and uh, you know, looked at their own families and yeah. and you know I know I had a hard time going to sleep last night and, and uh, you know I just kind of looked at what I had and you, you tend to appreciate things a lot more. Well all always remember what you know what happened yesterday and and the best thing I think you do is talk about it and uh, you know and eventually uh, have some you know stories and laughs uh, uh, when you can and uh, and celebrate uh, the fact that you were able to know Daryl what a great person he is and you know but as far as that that team I my really my deepest sympathy and uh, my prayers are, are with them and uh, his family and uh, I I just uh, hope for the best here. Last night, today, um, it's, it's, you know, I can't imagine calling. All right, this concludes it. I can't believe that this happened, and, you know, I've been searching for answers and, and things like that, and, and to be honest, the only reason that I feel like I needed to talk to you guys is for his family um, and for people around baseball to know how much he meant to me and how much. Well, you always look back at the Monday night. Necessary because as sometimes I say this goes far beyond baseball and it does. But I know that I would never have a chance um, to meet Daryl if it wasn't for baseball. And uh, I'm a better person because I've met Daryl Kyle. And uh, my thoughts and prayers just uh, just go out to, to Flynn and the kids and, and the family. Right now it's for the best for us as a team to try to get back to work and try to put this, you know, behind us a little bit. Um, it was best for the fans, best for baseball. I, I just think that, you know, we made a decision and we stuck to it. And hopefully it'll be the right thing to do. I think that what makes it even more shocking, and certainly, guys, any time, any player, I mean, you know, young man, 33, Daryl Carr was such a strong individual, both up here and, and, and certainly physically. Buck, I mean, you got to know him, certainly managing against him, but uh, he was almost with the Diamondbacks, right? That almost happened. Yeah, I spent, uh, you know, we spent a day trying to get him to come to Arizona, thought we had a good shot at him, and the thing that was most attractive to us, uh, you know, after having the meeting was Daryl didn't ask about the, how the locker room was, how the mode of travel was, how's the lounge, you know, what's the ballpark going to look like. He wanted to know if we were going to win in the term of his contract and how we were going to go about it. That's all he asked. He asked me a tough question. If I was your son, would you want me to come here and we'd have a chance to win? You know, and the thing that he cared so much about is what his teammates thought. And that's, that's rare. And, you know, I try to, and I evaluate players. I think about, are they going to care about what their teammates think? And he was able to humble himself and help the young players coming up and, and share the knowledge that he had and you hear so, so many times players are unwilling to talk uh, on camera they really don't want to do it but you see you see so many guys that they want to talk you know and, and playing the game is kind of a refuge for players to get out there in that element the one element that they are comfortable in between the lines and I think that's part of the healing process and a tribute tribute to to Daryl yeah you, you know I thinking about Daryl myself you keep hearing the Cardinal players talking about it was his turn. He always wanted the ball. And so I went back and just from a baseball standpoint, you know, he's had 216 starts since 1996. The only Glavin and Moltz are the only, Smoltz are the only guys that have had more, Glavin and Maddox have had more starts than this guy. I mean, that's the thing when you talk about uh, the Cardinals are going to miss on the field is the durability, what this guy brought. And Buck touched on it, making teammates better and the accountability. As a man, I think the biggest thing I'll miss is the consistency in his life and the type of person that he was, a family man. Uh, willing to work extra, spend time, 
and, and just the love he had for his wife and his kids. And I, I know the family is hurting, and our, our words may not be able to console them, but uh, tonight when you get a chance to pray, you pray for the Kyle family. You know, Harold, the other thing that hit me, too, here's a guy watching him pitch in Colorado. You never heard an excuse out there of his go. mouth. He always took the baseball, and I know looking over at him, I wonder if he ever thought, boy, should I have signed with Arizona? Never a, a, a glimpse of that. He was pitching for Colorado, and he went out there and, and really set, set the tone about how you handle that situation. He did the same thing in, in St. Louis. A lot of times, guys getting people out is one thing, but the tone you set and how you handle adversity. Walked in that clubhouse after a bad outing, and that was, you know, never pointing the finger at a fielder or a catcher or an umpire. You know, that was my responsibility. Right. The fact that, hey, nobody could pitch here in Colorado. No, 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 no. And I think that it's true, and you heard a lot of the, his Colorado teammates say it, and, um, was that he felt almost guilty about earning big bucks and not delivering in there. That that weighed heavily on him, that he wasn't holding up his end of the bargain, although God knows nobody tried harder than him. Uh, you're right, words, we can only try, but the memories of Daryl Cobb will live on for a long, long time. And again, our prayers out to his wife, Lynn, his family, immediate family, and his larger family. Um, and uh, he will be missed uh, forever. When we return, an injury again to one of the biggest names in baseball.